Andre Zeek or Graham Stephan, who should you listen to? Well, let's actually first uh, focus on how what their investment philosophy is, and then we'll talk about the differences. Andre Zeek, he's big on dividend investing. Basically, he he in most of his portfolio is focused on stocks that pay a dividend. Now, what is a dividend? It's basically when a company uh, pays part of its profits to its shareholders. Oh, here's a kitty. Hi, kitty. Hi, kitty, kitty, kitty. So, when a company pays its uh, pays its profits to its uh, shareholders, that's called a dividend. And that's basically what he likes to do because in a market crash, which we experienced in in uh, February, Andre's view is he's still collecting the uh, the the dividends, and he doesn't have to sell his stock when things are going going down. And so his view is kind of a long only strategy all the time. And he's not a market timer, and actually neither is Graham. Graham Graham's view is similar in that. He likes to have the monthly checks coming in, but he buys real estate with debt uh, in order to acquire it. And uh, that, that he also owns uh, in index funds too, but I don't think that his focus is on the dividends as much, so re whereas Andre's is. Now, there are pluses and negatives of both. With Graham, uh, we live in a time period where you can't evict a tenant on your, pr on your property, so I think that's a, interesting problem you would think that there are people who might be having a tough time paying their rent and you would think that's it, it really makes this kind of a risky investment especially at this point in time especially uh, when you have your properties in a very similar geographical area so people are likely to have very similar kind of problems paying the rent and while you still have to pay the mortgages on these properties so it requires a very huge a safety net I would say to be able to pay the mortgages when there's a high chance that many of your uh, tenants will not be able to pay their their mortgages whereas Andre's strategy uh, it seems it seems pretty strong now if you focus only on dividends uh, it's possible that those stocks don't gr don't grow as much I mean a lot of the top stocks that grow up, that grow substantially, that are true market leaders. A lot of them don't pay dividends. So, if that is your strategy, just to focus on the dividends, it's not necessarily the best strategy because you're you might be losing out on a chance for some gains. Now, I understand that some people choose to focus on dividends, but I think uh, usually, at least traditionally, it's been people who are older and are needing that extra uh, investment income. Whereas when you're young, like Andre, it actually usually makes more sense to focus on the growth rather than just gain dividends. So there are definitely pluses and negatives of that. Now the negatives are that uh, with Andre, uh, he did have a substantial, there were, I mean, it was a pretty big decline, just like the stock market did. He didn't sell, but the truth is when he buys these individual companies, and of course there is a risk that these companies could go down or maybe even go bust in a time period in which things are very uncertain because you don't really know if these companies are coming back. I mean, we never really experienced uh, a situation like we have had now where everything is being shut down and it's just, it's just a big, it's basically a big mess. And so I think some of his dividends were even, uh, were even cut too. So that's a risky strategy. And whereas with Graham, some of his tenants, I think one did get their rent reduced. So in both cases, there were some things uh, that came about. On balance, I would say I don't really necessarily follow either one. I actually prefer, I know both of them don't believe in timing the market, but if you read the, the, the newspaper Investors Business Daily, you can probably pretty much uh, follow their investment model, whereas when the stocks are in an uptrend, the market, the newspaper basically says it's in an uptrend. And right now we're in an uptrend. And and uh, earlier this year, the market, I mean, the newspaper did say, hey, the market is in a correction. If you were smart, you could have just sold all of your stock. And you wouldn't have, at that point in time, when things declined further, you would not have actually suffered any further losses. Whereas the Andre uh, strategy, it's kind of, it's kind of a, uh, w hoping that things get better soon because what if what if this were the Great Depression and these companies would have gone down 90 percent 
and that would be a huge, huge, that would be really, really problematic because you would be holding this stuff and losing a lot of money, whereas if you sold it uh, when, basically when the market was in correction, if you, if it really was like the Great Depression, you could have waited till it reached the bottom, I mean, if this happened, and then bought it really, really cheap, and then, and then rolled it all the way up. But So what happened though, is something that really is very, very rare, where the market drops dramatically, and then it basically comes back strong, yeah, traditionally that doesn't really happen to be honest major crashes like that usually result in and they're taking a very very long time for things to recover so the the fact that andre's strategy somewhat worked it's only really testament to the fact that we're in unusual conditions i think it's kind of dangerous to say that hey that's a great strategy it actually works actually no in many ways it might not work out in many cases the same is true for graham uh if this were a more severe depression where people really don't have the money, I mean, eventually at some point in time, they will just stop paying their rent because if they don't have the income, that can happen. And, and that could th still happen for all we know if the economy uh, collapses or anything like that. So both strategies are inherently uh, come with ri more risk, I think, than many people realize. Whereas I feel the timing of market and basically exiting the market completely once it's clear that we're in a correction and basically buying the market back up when uh, the market has a confirmed uptrend again that's when to buy it and why why do i need to hold stock if it's going down i mean most of the time stock market crashes do not happen in just one month that's a very unusual thing oftentimes it happens over a period of many months maybe even years in 2000 the nasdaq went down uh 90 percent i mean that's something you want to hold you want to hold your stock down until it goes down 90 percent and a lot of individual stocks will go down 90 percent in severe bear markets so is this something to consider I know that I actually think that both of them are entertaining. I like listening to both of them, but I don't really follow either of their investment strategies. So let me know about your investment strategies and what you think. And hopefully you subscribe. You need to smash the like button because that's really the most important thing. Because if you don't, if you don't subscribe, then you're missing out on so much great content and your friends will think you're on cool too. Anyway, talk to you in the next video.